Okay, well, hearing loss affects one in 10 New Zealanders. So what we're looking at is a way of how can we prevent hearing loss from occurring in the first place. And currently what happens is there are industrial devices called sound level meters, and they're used for measuring the sound level to give ear specialists an, an idea of what kind of sound level people are experiencing. But currently, sound level meters are quite big, bulky, they're yellow so they don't go well with any outfit, you just don't really want to carry one around. So what we're looking at is a device that can, is small, small enough to be worn inside the ear. So not only will it be more convenient to wear, but also it'll be a lot more accurate in measuring the sound level because you get sound right in the ear as your ear would experience it, as opposed to just holding it in your hand. And now project involved the design and development of such a device. Well, my first impression was, is this for real? Is <laughs> <laughs> and like, I was quite, uh, I guess I wasn't really, uh, we weren't really expecting it because we were only a two member team and all the previous uh, projects, they've been won by pretty large uh, teams and up to four people and they, they worked on some pretty amazing projects. So uh, we were quite, uh, I guess, surprised, but also excited that we won this award. Yeah. I think it's got a very, um, a very practical application. Um, and there's also a very significant and obvious need for a device like this. Um, which really, I mean, it really endears people to, to a project of this kind. Um, it was very successful, um, largely brought about by the fact that these two students are very capable. I think recognition is very important when anybody does something that's outstanding. And uh, since we began this, um, program medals that uh, my name's attached to. We've had some very interesting ones and some very successful ones. But I'd have to say this one's among the most successful of all. It's an uh, exciting project. And it's one that I have some sort of personal interest in. <laughs> no, not that I'm going deaf, but my wife certainly is. There was definitely, we did a lot of work in particular trying to make it as small as possible, as I talked about earlier. And in order to do that, we had to make quite a very small surface mount PCB. And we be, it was so small that we couldn't even manufacture it ourselves. So we had to get it manufactured externally per our design. So when we got it back, we had no idea if it would work or not. It had a lot of components on it. Um, and a lot of things could have gone wrong. We could have designed it wrong, it could have been manufactured wrong, and we just had no idea. So when we plugged it in, it worked, and we measured a sound level and compared it to the actual sound level meter, and it was the same. We were really, really happy, and that's when we thought that we might be onto something good. I would really like to work on um, developing medical devices and work in medical technology because that is a field that really intrigues me. It's, it's also a field where uh, not just engineering, but also medicine and physics come together. And it's a field that, uh, that can potentially um, impact many uh, lives. Engineering can be a, a little bit of a roller coaster road ride at times. Um, you can get up in the morning on a bad day and find you spend six hours on something and achieve absolutely nothing and it's really really frustrating but then on a good day you can solve a really really difficult problem and you get a real sense of achievement from actually solving that problem and knowing that you're actually helping to make the world better in doing so. I think the best thing about the engineering profession is that you're developing technology that people use every day and people even take for granted, for example, fresh water, uh, sewage, uh, computers. And um, the best thing about the engineering profession is that um, you're, you're, you're in a role where you could potentially shape society, well, you are shaping society. And where society goes in the future is um, in some ways dependent on engineers. For example, 
uh, climate change and um, renewable energy. And um, energy engineers are not only innovators, but they're also leaders in society in that sense. I think so. That's what I think of the engineering profession, leaders and innovators. It's probably not the first piece, but one piece of engineering that does inspire me is the internet. And I think the internet, um, you know, it started off um, as a little network at a university, and like, you know, no one thought, you know, what use could this be? You know, like it's, it was originally uh, designed for research purposes. And now, you know, we use the internet every day, emails, uh, social networking, videos. And, you know, the internet is just, completely changing the way we work, the way we interact with each other and entertain ourselves. And, you know, as internet speeds get faster and faster, you know, um, I wouldn't be surprised uh, that uh, we'll, we'll soon have um, some really amazing stuff happening, like perhaps appliances being connected to the internet and some really interesting things. So, yeah, the internet is something that it's, it's, it's a really amazing piece of engineering. Yeah. Some of the books I really enjoyed the most as a child were actually about space travel. And I thought it was pretty awesome, the idea that we could, you know, send a man all the way to the moon. And not only to the moon, but back and um, alive as well, which, which is, of course is very important. And really, it's in such a harsh environment. You're only, astronauts are only separated by a couple of centimetres from cold, dark space. And if we can, if 50 years ago we we're capable of doing that with essentially the technology which you can really, is the same as what it is in your phone or a calculator. So imagine 50 years later with the improvements in technology, what we can do now. So yeah, space travel has really been inspiring for me. I think we'll do wonders for my career. It would, it would look great on my CV. And um, especially when I'm applying for jobs, going to interviews and applying for scholarship applications. Firstly, it's given me a lot more confidence when I'm doing my engineering projects that I'm really doing the right thing and on my, you know, on, on the way to becoming a professional engineer and really making a difference in the world. And secondly, it's given, I think it's a really good bonus in terms of employers seeing it on your CV even universities as well, because such a prestigious, as, as prestigious award as the Ray Meyer really recognizes many skills like your problem solving, perseverance, planning, a whole lot of things that really make you good as an engineer. I knew it would be successful right from the very beginning. And the reason I knew it would be successful was because these are two extraordinarily capable people. And when you have that sort of um, intellectual horsepower behind you, and you know, more than that, just extraordinary innovation, um, there was no way in my view that it was going to fail. At the conclusion of our project, we act uh, I was actually hired by the company that sponsored uh, our project. And uh, while I was uh, working with them, I developed the second prototype for our uh, air level data logger. And this prototype has uh, extra features. It's got much lower power, power consumption, and it could potentially be a uh, commercial device.